So far, the Nina project. So we're pretty much taking off straight from the uh, the ending of last episode where they have the shootout with the, the army guys come in and uh, fighting the, the FBI agents. So they're in the car. They obviously got their old mate Pizza Man to come and save them. And <laughs> I really like the, the chaos that was happening in the car. So they've got the, the FBI agent, he's holding his wound and like obviously our stoner friend he's driving the driving the car and he's normally a cool calm collected has no idea what's going on kind of character but even he's quite stressed and you've got everyone else yelling so they're all going 100 miles an hour they finally get to some used car lot and we get to actually see will and mike sort of is is will finally going to confess his love to to Mike, like we're about to get there, but then we've got our our lovely driver who's trying to write his uh, the tombstone on a pizza box. Like I know it's comical relief, and they're trying to bring some tension out of it, so you're not always really tense and sort of watching what's going on. But I felt like it's it's distracting. Like I don't like his character. Like if they didn't have the pizza guy in there, it it wouldn't affect it. It would probably actually made. For me, personally, it would have made the show a little bit better, a little bit smoother, but I just don't need that. There's too many comic relief characters going on here. So, so we've got Dustin, like he has his comic relief stuff. We've got Yuri, so Yuri's, he's ridiculous. So you've got Murray, and now you've, and you've got the, the pizza boy. So there's too many comic relief characters. Elle's obviously been, she gets taken at the end of last episode, so the FBI guys stop the, the police car and take her along and that's where she gets to sort of get back into the bunker so i really like the little bunker up the top and he's taken down so i like the contrast between obviously our opening scene in one where we actually get to see the the poppers sort of training ground where it's all white and shiny and sort of clinical where this one they've converted to like a missile silo bomb shelter kind of thing into the the lab which I like the contrast between them. So obviously before it was kind of the clinical stuff and now they're working, operating underground, even though it was underground, it seemed like it was sanctioned by someone where this is, we learn those people have actually like left their families and left their jobs to be able to go into this facility to, well, dedicate their lives to the cause, which obviously Popper is running, running the cause for them where I like the contrast, I like the symbolism of it. When Popper and Elle finally have the like, reveal, um, you can see the fear in Elle's eyes. Like um, she is leaps and bounds ahead of where she was in season one. Like her acting ability have really grown. I feel like she really holds it together. Like her whole segment in this show has been fantastic to see like a development and a, like you can actually see the fear and the, and the anguish that's coming to the complicated relationship that's going to unfold between those two. Joyce and Murray, they're trying to get to, well, to meet for the exchange for Hopper, but the interactions between those two and Yuri, it's just ridiculous. Like there's a point where they're on the plane, like Yuri actually backstabs them and Joyce and Murray are actually drugged. They're, you know, like tied up and wake up in the plane and they're able to learn that peanut he's a peanut butter smuggler, but originally he claims that peanut butter was banned in Russia, which I looked up, but it wasn't actually banned officially, but it was just really hard to come by in the 1980s in Russia. So, stretching the truth a little bit that Yuri, you know, he's got a few screws loose, so let's play it. But the whole scene was a little bit silly. Like we get to learn that Murray's, you know, Krav Maga or whatever his black belt stuff is, isn't quite what he's let on. Like the whole thing was a bit silly. They've got, they get out of their bonds and they have a confrontation with Yuri, but like no one's flying the plane. Like, come on guys, you should be, should be flying the plane. Like, I don't know if it has autopilot. I'm assuming it doesn't it's considering it's one of those small little planes. I'm not, you know, that versed on plane, so if it does have autopilot, let me know. But yeah, it's just, it's over the top and it's a little bit silly and it's taken away from the serious tone that they've been building towards. But like, so Max is obviously listening to music all the time. Like I like how they continually repeat that she's putting the music on because she is quite worried. 
but like how often can you listen to the same song without getting sick of it where they actually do point that out which is nice because i was like more like if i was listening to that same song over and over again would it continually be my favorite and they sort of hinted that music is one of those things that's able to save save you from the underdark and old mate vecna's sort of hold mind games which <laughs> i guess if it was your favorite song you wouldn't get sick of it but also i would probably still enjoy it if it was keeping me alive rather than in the clutches of a demon so yeah yeah fair, fair play we, we have obviously hopper and he's with dimitri so Though the interaction between Hopper and Dimitri is pretty cool, like Dimitri's a guard, which I didn't actually realise that he was in Game of Thrones, he's the faceless man, which I'm a little bit embarrassed and <laughs> to tell you that it took me a little while to make that connection in terms of where I'd seen him before, but their interactions, I felt like Hopper's backstory dump, like it was, felt a little bit forced and a little bit, you know, I know he's in a bad situation, but I feel like his character probably wouldn't just, you know, info dump on a random guard. I know the random guard is trying to help him, but I feel like the guard's doing it to make money. He's not doing it because he feels bad for him. But yeah, I guess we, we wanted to have that more of an emotional connection with Hopper and we can sort of see why Joyce is doing it. And we can, we want to really set that emotional connection between Hopper and Joyce and we want Hopper to succeed, but need to be over dramatic in terms of allowing that backstory dump called fbi agents are uh, going around and they've gone to chrissy's sort of to where chrissy died which is obviously eddie's uh trailer house or whatever it is which i guess it's a home it just reminds me a bit like a trailer park but he's got like the old ghostbuster kind of gun and going around like i just found that really comical i know it's probably something that would have been around in the 1980s but the actual design of it just reminded me too much of the ghostbuster gun but yeah i guess they are dealing with demons and ghosts and <laughs> i guess that was the design back then this is funeral and i like the little inclusions of you know vecna doing his thing and like getting into people's minds so one of the basketball team they see the the clock over there but then obviously that sparked jason and his team to go on that really big manhunt again. So they're really, you know, out for blood in terms of chasing down Eddie. So they're devising their plan and off they go. Like they finally do sort of see, find him and he's, Eddie, well, Eddie's become a little bit too comfortable in his surroundings. So he's, he's hiding up in this house who apparently the, the guy's house was, is in jail. So they don't know that he's actually out, but Rumour comes and they're fed it and they're off they go. Like it felt like men in, well, felt like they're the mafia as they roll up to the woods. They're all in their suits post funeral and they've got their crowbars and they're off for a manhunt. And good old Eddie's, you know, out on a boat <laughs> for whatever reason. And here we go. The Jason just, you know, strips off. He's got no hesitations about her. And he's a very quick swimmer, like to the point where I didn't think he'd catch the boat that quickly considering the boat was like already a fair way out. I know Eddie's probably not the, the most athletically gifted in terms of trying to paddle or get a motor started, but he catches quickly and Jason's offside of the one that was seeing the clock in the funeral. He gets done by obviously Vecna, he comes in and wrecks him. And this is where we sort of see I thought Jason would have a little bit of a turn of heart, but that's where we sort of end up and finish that storyline for this episode where we get to see the body get torn apart. Like every time a body is torn apart and Vecna does his thing, like it's really cool to see. I really like that inclusion and how he sort of dismembers the bodies. And those two reactions are, are quite well received in terms of that's what you'd probably expect from them. But L is back into we're getting the, the backstory fed to us but her suit <laughs> i don't know what it is but it, it looks like a stormtrooper it looks like half a stormtrooper i don't know what it is i can't every time i see it i just think of her doing stormtrooper stormtrooper training but that might just be me if you think it is let me know in the comments below 
overall, it wasn't as good as the last couple of episodes, but I can see they're building and they are trying to tie everything in. Like I think they're bringing probably a little bit too many characters all coming in at the one time, but they are getting a little bit longer run time. So I'm sure they're able to tie it all in nicely at the end and we'll get to see that from, from now. So you know what to do, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and uh, tell your friends.